Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the uh, top 10 non-fiction books book tag. So, I think this was created by Totally Pretentious, but I may have to check. Uh, I will link to the original video below. And, uh, yeah, I also can't remember who tagged me now. I think it was whoever created the tag. It's been a while, okay, and I've been distracted. Uh, I'm also filming on my phone, as you can see. Hopefully my camera will be back soon. The point of this book is to grab 10 of your favourite non-fiction books and to talk about them. So, I don't think this is in any particular order. I think it may have been in a particular order when I made it and has since fallen apart. So we'll start with these ones. So, here we have Predatory Thinking by Dave Trott. So basically, it's, um, I guess like a business inspiration book, but it kind of teaches you to think outside the box and it does this by giving all sorts of real world historical examples of when people have looked at things a little bit differently and come up with a cool solution because of it. And also it's just written in a very unique style as well. He writes in quite short sentences. I'll uh, give you an example. That frail frightened lady did whatever it took, however hard, however long, night after night, month after month. And that's the difference. Unless we make it happen, it never exists. I will say that was a story about a little old lady who murdered her husband, so you know. Here we have Richard Dawkins, The God Delusion. This is a non-fiction book arguing against the existence of a god, basically. Uh, it was a big bestseller about 10, 15 years ago, and I picked it up back then. I mean, I'm an atheist, so I kind of agree with Dawkins going into it, but it was, um, you know, it was good to get some arguments to back up my own beliefs, I suppose. And um, yeah, I've since reread it via audiobook. Also, when I read the re when I wrote my review of this and posted it on Twitter, he retweeted it, and then I got loads and loads of death threats from people because of it. So that's you know a thing. Didn't realise in this day and age people literally get death threats over Twitter for reading a book. Here we have Shadows on the Tundra by Dalia Grunkovistrete. Uh, this is. Um, basically a survival memoir, a bit in the vein of the Diary of Anne Frank. Um, I I'll read you the blurb here for this one, I think, because this also gives you the background of uh, the story itself, the story behind the story, you know? In 1941, 14-year-old Dahlia Grinkovisuete and her family are deported from their native Lithuania to a labour camp in Siberia. As the strongest member of her family, the girl submits to 16 hours a day of manual labour. At the age of 21, Dahlia escapes the gulag and returns to Lithuania. She writes her memories on scraps of paper and buries them in a glass jar in the garden, fearing they might be discovered by the KGB. They are not found until 1991, four years after her death. So, yeah, I mean, it's all translated into English, obviously, but the fact that this story managed to survive it alone is just mind-blowing, you know? Here we have As You Wish, Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride by Carrie Elwes. Uh, with Joe Layden and a foreword by Rob Reiner. Basically, if you've seen the movie The Princess Bride, you'll kind of know what this is about. It's all the behind-the-scenes stuff of what happened when they were filming that movie. But it's one of my favourite movies of all time. I've heard the uh, audiobook of this is really good as well, and I haven't had the pleasure of listening to that yet, although I probably will do at some point. I think because Carrie Elwes himself reads it and does, like, impressions of his fellow cast and stuff, but... Yeah, you probably wouldn't want to read this one if you weren't a Princess Bride fan, but if you are, it's definitely a must read. Here we have Inferior by Angela Saini. This is actually an advanced proof copy I got given. How science got women wrong and the new research that's rewriting the story. And this is basically how science has screwed women over. I mean, to the point at which, like in medical drug trials, for example, they would normally just test them on men and then just roll them out to women without really testing them. The worry being that if they tested them on women and the women turn out to be pregnant, it could affect the baby, you know? Uh, really fascinating read and um, definitely one I would recommend. Here we have Inbound Marketing, Get Found Using Google, Social Media and Blogs by Brian Halligan and Dharmesh Shah. These guys founded a company called HubSpot, which kind of pioneered the field of inbound marketing and um, it's actually gone through an IPO it is worth billions of dollars now and stuff uh, back in the day it was quite innovative thinking but the idea is instead of interrupting people by pushing adverts in front of them you can bring them to you by creating great content and that's what inbound marketing and this you know content marketing and social media marketing and stuff is all about they all rely on the concepts from this book here we have rebellious spirits by Ruth Ball audacious tales of drinking on the wrong side of the law so this is basically um, about the history of smuggling in Britain. It does have some stuff in here as well about the American Prohibition, but it does, yeah, mostly, I would say, focus on Britain. Uh, and just the research that she's carried out and some of the characters that she talks about, it's just fascinating, really. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I got, again, I got sent this one for review and didn't get to it for a while. I'd just been putting it off for some reason. Then when I finally picked it up, yeah, I was very impressed. Okay, then we have Farmageddon, The True Cost of Cheap Meat by Philip Limbury and Isabel Oakeshott. And um, basically, this is this is one of the books that turned me vegan, you know. Uh, I was al already vegetarian. I actually read this prepar uh, preparing for my novel called Meat, which is set on a factory farm. And um, just some of the stuff I discovered about it, about dairy cows and that sort of thing, and like uh, layer eggs, uh, layer chickens, and then when they're hatching the eggs, they only want the women, the female chickens, because they're the ones that lay the eggs, so they just tend to toss the males alive into a grinder. It's not nice, you know? So, um, yeah, it's just a really thoroughly well-researched book. Philip Limbury, I've actually interviewed him as well for my book, Meat. Um, he is um, the head of Compassion and World Farming as well, and he's got some other stuff out that's worth checking out too. Then we have A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. I've got to be honest, I'm not sure why I picked this one out above other ones when I was compiling this top 10. But yeah, uh, I did enjoy reading this. I think it is a little bit dated now because she kind of argues a woman needs £500 a year or a month a year I think and a room of her own if she is to write and now it's just like a woman needs like a laptop and couple of quid to buy a cup of coffee at an internet cafe or something you know but um i think what's interesting is actually to read this and to see how much has changed since this was written and also how much hasn't in a way as well so there's a lot of stuff that's happening today that's still pretty concerning you know that she does touch upon um but yeah definitely it earns its place in the route the the you know canon of classical literature and finally, we have Notes from a Small Island by Bill Bryson. So this is his travel journals of his time spent traveling around the UK. Uh, he's a, he was born as an American, but has been a UK citizen citizen for a while. And yeah, it was just interesting to see the country that I live in through his eyes as a non-native, you know? And uh, it was sort of devastatingly funny as well. I do find that Bryson can be a little bit hit and miss, but this one for me is a big hit and is really the reason why I got into his stuff and why I still read him today. So there we have it, that's my take on the top 10 non-fictions book tag. I suppose I should uh, tag some people as well, so hang on a minute. I'm gonna go into my comments as I usually do and tag some people who've recently commented. At the time of filming, I haven't actually posted a video for a while, so uh, I'm gonna tag Break Even Books, Made With Books, Todd the Librarian, Armin the Reader, Jason's Weird Reads, Charles Heathcote, Big Hard Books and Classics, Alan Morton, and Hungry Bookworm. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.